All right, are you guys ready to have some fun? Okay, well, one thing you're going to find out from me if you've heard any of my CDs is what you see is what you get, and whether you like it or not, that's what you're going to get anyhow, okay? So I'll just be honest. I'm, I'm really actually, uh, the topic I have, I'm very excited to share this with you, and I think you guys are going to uh, get a tremendous amount from what I'm about to cover. So I'd, I'd recommend you have some pens and papers handy. And this topic, uh, when Ken asked me what I wanted to speak on, this, this topic came up as something at the time that was really just moving me. And it, it really is something I'm on now, uh, not on a kick with, but I think I've really stumbled onto something I may have lost uh, hold of. And it stems from a phone call I got not too long ago. A guy called me up and said, hey, Mike, this is uh, Joe. I'll use it, just that name. And I said, hey, Joe, what's going on? He said, listen. I've been watching your videos on YouTube. I've been watching you on the internet. I see your stuff out there. You're winning all kinds of awards. You're getting people into the business. Your sales are going through the roof. You're making money. You got this, you got that, you got that. How in the world are you doing it? And you know what the crazy part was? I didn't have an answer. How, how weird is that? Can you imagine if somebody actually was having success but couldn't explain what their main, what they were doing? Right? Anybody stumbled upon that before? Had that happen? And what was neat is it, it actually got me, he's like, it was almost a letdown for the, the phone call. And I was like, well, that's not cool. You know, this guy had actually reached out for me, or to me, for some knowledge in this area, and I didn't know why I was actually becoming successful. So what it led me to do was ask that question. How in the heck do you become successful? What are the key points? What are some things that make people better salespeople than other people? Why can some people, you know, get people engaged in their businesses more often than other people? Why does it just seem like people are just jumping on board to join one person's team versus another? Why are this guy selling? And you get the point, correct? Do you want the answers? Yeah. Write this down. Here you go. Here's your answer. I love it when all the pens come flying out in anticipation. Elephant? And ant. All right, thanks guys for listening. <clears throat> Elephant and ant. Okay, Mike. Great. Okay, now I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm going to keep this basic. I'm going to keep it very simple, but you're going to enjoy this. And the reason I have ant and elephant written down, elephant and ant, is because this is going to be the thing that you're going to be able, while you're out and about during your day, that will trigger the responses that you're going to know what side of the business or what side of the area that you're on. All right. So let me explain to you what elephant and ant mean. Elephant actually represents your subconscious mind. That is pretty much your, your will, your emotions, the things that move you. The ant pretty much represents the details. Which one's bigger? Elephant, right? Now, if you're looking at this from a scientific standpoint, now trust me, I'm going to keep it basic, so I'm not going to go into detail on the science here. But the subconscious mind, scientifically, they have shown that the, the, the intellectual mind, the, where you think on the how-tos, how let's look at let's consider it the how-tos or how something's made, the, the details, uh, triggers those things in your brain, and you have to ask some of the doctors what some of these, what these things called neurons are. They're kind of like energy sparks or that triggers about, uh, I think it's about 2,000 neurons get triggered when somebody's doing the details of a business. That's how their mind is operating. But did you know that the elephant side, the subconscious mind, when properly triggered, stimulates over 4 billion neurons? 4 billion. Now, that doesn't mean much to anybody right about now, but I'm going I'm to bring this all together so that it's going to work for you. The difference you have here is that typically when people are out, a lot of times when you're doing business or sales of any kind, your tendency, because this is what we were conditioned to do in school, is throughout school you are taught methodically to become educated in processes. Okay, now there's a place for that. I understand that. I mean, I'm not going to have a doctor that has not been to school open my melon up and start cutting. Would you agree, okay? We'd like that education. But at the same time, that's not necessarily the thing that's gonna trigger the greatest response. So let me, let me get this going here. 
when we're in school as we're, as we're young, do you remember ever daydreaming? Okay. Daydreaming and vision, it, it, the Bible clearly says this, and I'm a big fan of the Bible, by the way, but the Bible says that without vision, the people do what? Perish. Okay, so the people perish without vision. At the same time, it says, as a man thinks in his heart, actually is representing the subconscious, the, the mind, you know, the will, above and beyond the will and emotions, that this is where faith stems from. Now, there's, a, there's also a verse that says that uh, uh, the faith, uh, uh, Hebrews 11.1, 1. now faith is the substance of things hoped for, not yet seen. Okay, so I'm not going to, I'm not preaching to you, but I want to give you some things because if, when I tie this together, it will change your business career. So looking at this, when I started talking to people and I, I looked back at my, my life, okay, reflecting back to my life, I was like, well, what made me react or not react to c- certain situations? And who was happened to be in there? Who's the big muscle head back in the early 80s? Arnold, everybody knows that, Right. And I started opening this magazine up, and what was I looking at? I was looking at this massively muscular dude, and I was thinking to myself, looking in the mirror, thinking what was the present tense of Mike Healy, was that I did, I wanted to look similar to that, correct? So what all of a sudden started happening was that my mind, which was, you know, it's God instilled, was starting to get a new, new uh, thought pattern, kind of a new revelation in me that I could actually change. And I started reading these magazines. And I remember when our high school actually bought the first set of weights. Like back in the, uh, this would be in the mid-80s, most p- schools didn't have gyms yet, okay? It wasn't the norm. It was kind of, you know, if you lift weights, you'll be short. I'm like, well, I'm short anyhow. I'm going to lift anyhow. <laughs> Heck with your theory, you know? Doesn't seem like I'm getting any taller and mom's shorter than me now. And... I remember grabbing a, a 50 pound dumbbell and because I'd seen it in the magazine and I was picking it up to carry it into the gym and I'm a sophomore and I'm like both hands carrying it like this and I'm just dra- it's almost dragging it across the ground and I said one of these days I'm going to be able to curl this 50 pound weight and I said that out loud in front of some upperclassmen. Take a guess the beat and I took on the football field later on that afternoon, Right? But I began to replay in my head again and again and again the power of how I wanted to portray myself and what I believed that I could do. And so that, that started to change. Now, the reason I'm kind of giving these stories is I, and then I look back at my business. Um, when I started getting into the business field, one of the turning points of my life was when I met a guy that was in his late 30s that I'd heard about and I'd read about that had, had started his own business, uh, direct selling business, and I started reading about him and listening to him, and what was it that comp- what appealed to me? Was it the amount of presentations this guy had to probably go do that was appealing? Wow, man, I hope I can go do presentations every single day. When I listened to his CDs and people didn't show up at his events, or there was nobody there when he drove, you know, 100 miles to go see anybody, did I think, oh, man, I can't wait to drive 100 miles and have somebody stand me up. This is going to be awesome. This would be the greatest idea ever. I remember, you know, and it, guess, what I, guess what got me to continue to move forward was the vision of the, the subconscious of the final, of the completion of what I wanted to be. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, let me bring this up as, as an example. My, I use my son, my 11-year-old son. I'm so proud of this kid. His name's Isaiah, and he just, whew. I can do this. I can do this. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Ken. That's our trick. Ken claps so we get off task. I keep my tears back. My 11-year-old son, I've done the best I could to raise him, and, it's, and I, I really... Uh, I mean, every success I have in business and in life, really, I do uh, credit to my pastor. But it's neat to see how this has actually produced uh, good, the seed has produced into a good harvest with this little boy. And my 11-year-old, all my kids are awesome, but I want to use him as an example. My 11-year-old son, he's been watching football with me and everything like that, right? 
Now, do you get some kid excited about football by telling him, you know, son, when it's 105 degrees out, it's a really cool thing to start running sprints until you throw up. And then after you're done throwing up, some really big guys that are skilled above and beyond the skill of you are going to come and try to rip your head off. You want to go throw ball, buddy? Okay. Would that be the thing that's going to entice my son to go want to do football? So while we're watching these things, and we're watching TV, and I'm replaying things into his head, guess what I'm doing with him? I'm talking about when he looks at a player, I say, look at Tim Tebow as an example. I said, Tim Tebow really has pushed through the adversity of the, you know, of being a homeschool guy and getting all this and what he stands for and his moral values. But look at where he's at. He's in the NFL and he's, and he's now here he is. Do you see how I'm getting the subconscious mind to trigger that? And it starts to get instilled in people. And then, then when my son, this, what was really cool is this past summer, my son actually took it upon himself to, to start working out. An 11-year-old by himself started going out there and running sprints in the yard. And I jumped right out there, not to run the sprints, but I, I, I actually challenged him a couple times. But I ran out there, and I took him, and when we were doing some stuff, I did some drills with him where he would drag this heavy, uh, kick, it's a kickboxing bag, it's a boxing bag that I have in my house. It's like 80 pounds. He only weighs like 100, right? So it's like dragging a full body, and I strapped it around his waist, and I said, I want you to bear crawl, and I want you to sprint as hard as you can. To, the, to this end right there. And it's about a 40-yard sprint. And I had him do it again and again and again. And right when he was about to quit, this is where it's the most important for you and your people, is that I reminded him of the dream, of what was going to happen if he continued to sprint. I reminded him that he was going to be able to start, even though it was only his second year. He's a skinny, scrawny kid. And guess what? Not only did he start this year, the kid's like amazing. He catches, they put him at wide receiver. Guess who can't catch him on the field? Anybody. Last week, they had triple coverage on this, this 11-year-old. The coaches on the other side are yelling over, watch 58, watch 58. And I'm thinking, man, and he runs out. Four guys on him, somehow he jumps up and grabs the ball and brings it down with four guys around him. Place goes nuts, and, and I'm sitting there, and every day these are life lessons that he's been able to learn, and it's because I had to learn these myself. So let me, let me get into something a little less, less emotional. When you're out there uh, in your business world, you have to remember that it's not about the business. It's not about the product. It's about the benefits. Write that word down. It's about the benefits. It's about the dream. It's about the vision. The, the point that, I, that you have to understand here, and I think you're getting it, obviously, is that I, I started after doing this study of, of, you know, really looking back as to where the success was, because... I didn't, I barely graduated high school. If my parents weren't teachers there, I'd probably still be there. That is not a, my dad, this is a true story, and I know a lot of you are new here, but this is a true story. When I graduated high school, uh, my dad, because he was a, a teacher there, was able to hand my diploma to me. They thought that would be kind of cool that my dad gave it to me. My dad leans over as I get my diploma, you know, we're kind of joking around, whispers in my ear, I can't believe they passed you. That was at my graduation. This is true. This is true. So uh, I'm living proof that anybody can do it. And I don't even know if I finished my story. I started way back about the uh, guy that had all the driving around. Actually, I didn't. Let me finish that. Um, the cool part was is when I started business back to that guy is what was really neat is this gentleman, it wasn't, it wasn't the stories of the heart, heartache and the, the heartbreak and the disappointments that really that moved me. I knew that was part of the, the growing process. It's actually uh, another Bible one for you is that it says, uh, you know, rejoice in your trials because they actually, you know, create better character. A lot of times people don't understand that in their lives that it's, it's uh, you know, your, your character is what's really going to help you to go from level to level to level to level. And it was neat to, to see this guy. And when I finally met this gentleman at his house for the first time, it was to me, 
because I'd read up on him and everything, and I got to go to his house. It was almost like an Elvis sighting to me. I was so excited. And I went into his house, and uh, the guy that month, I had talked to him, and I said, how, you know, because I didn't know any better. I was still paralyzed in my 20s, mid-20s when I asked him this question. I said, hey, how much did you make this month? And he said, well, right, look on my coffee table there. And this was before there, you know, there was an internet that you actually could look into somebody's uh, on the computer. And on his uh, coffee table was this printout of the amount of uh, people he had gotten paid on uh, that were doing some sales and some businesses. And his check that month was for $656,000. For 30 days, the guy had put $656,000 in his pocket. And to me, because I had no business background whatsoever, I was terrified that he would not be able to spend all that in the first 30 days because another 30 days was coming, and what was he going to do with that? <laughs> right? So I was, I was so scared, you know. Oh my gosh, this guy's got all this money. What's he going to do with it? You know, I had no idea. I just, every, everything I did was just went out the window. I might as well set fire to all my money. Um, and, and, it, and I listened to this guy's story because I'd heard him speak on stage one time over and over and over and over and the only, and I couldn't figure out what made this guy tick. Because every time I'd run up to him, I'm like, well, how do you do this presentation? And how, how, do, how does this work? And how, do, how does this detail? What part of my brain am I feeding? So thank you. The, what part of my brain am I feeding there? The ant, the ant, the ant, the ant. Which, was be, which would be easier to ride, by the way? Elephant, thank you. Elephant's going to get you through all the stuff. And I remember his, he never really had an answer for me. He could never really even figure out himself what he was doing. And I started listening, and I've listened to his CDs over and over and over again. I still do because they're just so remarkable. And all he really talked about the whole time was about vision and about, uh, you know, changing people's lives and how his one buddy uh, who was from Kentucky was so excited he got this thing called a lexicosis. He couldn't pronounce Alexis. He goes, man, I went and got me a lexicosis, you know, like that. But it, it, it came down to the point that here's what a lot of people do in their business, is most of the time I see it, and I can tell by the numbers when I look at any, any business or when I'm talking to people, what side of the, ant, of, of the, the, the business are you uh, addressing? Are you addressing the, the ant or are you addressing the elephant? And you, know, you can look at your numbers and anything across the board, that if you don't take the time to go after, because I don't, you know, I never joined business because I was going to have to learn stuff. I joined business because I saw the vision of driving nicer cars, living in nicer houses. I mean, if you look at uh, church, for example, I mean, the, the churches that are typically empty are the ones that force, you know, religion and duty and all that down somebody's throat, where there's obviously got to have some structure there. But the, the ones that really seem like they're working are, are actually feeding the correct side of the person's subconscious, the brain, the, the benefits of it. I mean, that's the only reason I ended up going to the church that I did is my pastor actually had a nice house, had a nice car, um, had a great family. Kids were all on the worship team and everything like that. And I was coming out of the bar business. And I actually, this is, this is, this is me, how tactful I am. Coming out of the bar business, going to this guy's church. And I go to his house for this, this Christmas party. Nice house. You know, he's not lavish or anything like that. And, he, and I go, hey, Gary. Well, you know, I call him pastor now respectfully. Like, Gary, about time I see somebody practicing what they preach. That was what I said to him. And he started laughing. He goes, well, I'm glad you approved, Mike. Thanks, buddy. But, I would, but the thing was, guess what? But the thing was, here's the thing. If he wasn't walking the walk Beside, he was talking the talk, but he continued to do that. And I, and I can use him as an example as one of the most uh, amazing things. When I started going to that church, there was only 40 people meeting in this little tiny room in this uh, old radio station. And he kept filling people with vision, talking about what we're going to do. We're going to do big and great and mighty things. And then he started, then we moved from there into another facility that, had, that could hold about two or 300 people. Church started growing. It was an old warehouse. And when it would rain real hard, you could barely hear it even over a microphone because it was a tin roof. You can get the point there, right? And he started talking about how we're going to reach the world and we're going to do this and we're going to do this. Talk about the crazy dancing man video. That was him. And I looked at him and was like, you know what? This guy might just pull this off. I might just get some, learn some stuff while I'm here, right? That's about how I looked at it. And today, we're now in a, just a few years later, we're literally in a, we, this small group of people paid off, 
because of somebody painting a big enough vision, paid cash for some property, like 20 acres in prime real estate area, we now have a $6 million facility that over, over 1,500 members are coming and lives are being changed from there. But it all stemmed from one person's bravery to go ahead and feed the elephant as opposed to the ant. If he was to go into detail and say, you know what, we need this, and you guys are going to have to go out, and you're going to have to go out and do fundraisers, and we're going to have to do milk, you know, go do what do they do, potlucks, yeah, okay, you know, and things like that. But what he did is he started creating our, my vision to become business owners because the size of the vision that, that I wanted for my life and what we wanted for, as, as a facility couldn't have come from the people where their vision currently was as nine to five employees. Because I'm a huge proponent in giving, right? And you can't give to the poor if you're one of them. Am I right? You know, a lot of people, oh, you know, you, you know you, I'm like, okay, you, you know, money's just stuff. It's either good or bad. If you're an, an idiot without money, you're going to be a bigger idiot with a lot. If you're a nice person without money, you're going to be even a nicer person with a lot of money. And what was really neat is to watch how he imparted the vision, and he had, he had this picture in the hallway of this place that showed the, 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 the blueprint of the final photo of what this church was going to look like. And every day when you walked in church, guess what you saw every single day when you walked through there? The church, right? This finished thing. So when I'm walking in and mice are running through the facility, when it flooded one time and I had to go in with, uh, and the whole church is completely flooded, smells bad, it's backed up with sewer and everything, what happened to his, what did he have to do when it didn't look possible? Paint the vision, thank you. He had to paint the vision for other people to follow to continue to move on the path that we do this. And let me kind of, I think I'm about out of time here, is when, you, when you're meeting with somebody, I don't even ever have to ask them to buy or really anything. I don't have any smart closing techniques or anything. I just take the time to identify what subconsciously moves that person? What is their why? I have learned uh, how to be a, you know, a, a, a decent and caring person through a few things, reading and you know, going to church, things like that. So that gets my foot in the door for a relationship. But ultimately, it's the people who learn how to paint the vision of products, Things like that. Like I got a buddy that uh, his, he sells. What was really cool, and I'm going to my rabbit trail again, is my wife Stacy, we have a couple friend of ours, and I want to kind of actually t t toot their horn right now. Uh, Dwayne and Tasha, this is a great, they're, they're our best, they're basically our best friends, people we hang out with the most and stuff like that. And they had been living in this rundown, animal infested house for years and years and years. I'm talking just bad. And here I am making all this money, right? And you can, you can see how if they didn't have the right character, there could be a strain in a relationship right there, right? You, you'll tell who, you, you'll find out, by the way, hint, hint, when you start making a lot of money, who your real friends are, good and bad. You know, you'll find out who's a handout person that's hanging out with you there. Or you'll find out who's genuinely happy for your success. And the reason they're not successful is because they repel people who are. Okay, let me, keep, let me, let me stay on track. I can do a whole CD on that one. But these guys, what was really neat is Stacy goes up to the wife, Tasha, one time, and they're on vacation together at this place. They were just thinking about, he actually was a plumber for uh, probably 25, 26 years. Like literally, he told me stories that were just horrific, right, of plumbing. And, he tell, and, and she tells Tasha, she said, let me ask you something. What are you going to do when you start making $25,000 a month? with your new, the new business you're stepping out on. No one had ever asked that per, her that question, I don't think, in her life. And it literally made her step back and start to address that because most people can't go to a place ever that they've never envisioned to begin with. And see, a lot of people out there in the world are trying to get people to do things for the wrong reasons. It's not their reasons. And it's our job, it's our responsibility just as 
good, caring people is to instill hope in people. It's to instill hope into people because if you can instill hope, you can change everything, right? Hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Hope deferred gets it. But when you get somebody to turn on the dream machine, everything in their life changes, everything. Stacy actually, uh, she did a, a before and after contest one time. She had gotten, um, how, how, do you, how do you politely say this? She had third child. She had gained a few pounds, okay? And there was a contest that came up. And she literally, she didn't look at, okay, I got to start eating good. I got to go in and, you know, work out every day. I got to dedicate myself there. I got to find somebody to watch the kids while I'm at the gym, but she had specifically found a targeted goal that she went after. And literally, this was in uh, 2003, she actually won a brand new 2003 uh, 50th anniversary Corvette for being the overall grand prize champion of that. But I guarantee you she wouldn't have made it through the gym if she didn't have that vision in front of her, if she didn't have the, if the elephant wasn't the one that was making her move to that, that next level. And... Back to the Tasha and Dwayne, because they are sidetracked there, is what's really neat is uh, I, just con- I just continued, just as a friend, so as we're not even in business together, but as a friend, I kept encouraging Dwayne and saying, Dwayne, you, listen, man, you deserve success. You're a good-hearted man. You're, you, you're going to be a great blessing to people. You just have to believe in yourself. You just have to know that you can win. You can do this. And I'm, I'm sure the wife, I know Tasha, I'm sure she was cracking the whip, buddy. Had to get some stuff there. But they were working together as a team, and they both continued to keep the vision going. And he called me last, uh, it was about two weeks ago, he called me because he was so excited. He had his first $10,000 income week. And the guy was struggling. And I mean, literally, they were thousands and thousands of dollars behind. And I was so, I said, Dwayne, I am so proud of you, buddy. I'm so proud of you. And that to me meant, ev- that to me meant everything. And, I, and, it was, and this is during this time of me studying all this stuff was just is so impactful because when you, when you meet people where they're at, because you, know, you can get excited about making money and things like that. And, and let me rabbit trail again. I like nice cars. You guys like nice cars? I'm telling you, they're a lot more fun to drive than old ones. They really are. And I get in this, and I'm sitting there thinking about, you know, the cars and stuff like that and getting that dream going. Sometimes you have to help people emotionally feel an experience in their head. If you can get somebody to, if you can figure out a way, and I know, I think you guys get this by now because I'm hammering it pretty hard, is if you can figure out that when you're having a conversation with somebody to experience it before they actually do, they're in, they're buying, they're doing whatever it takes because that's the one that's triggering all the neurons <laughs> to, to make that elephant move. That's the one that sees the person that's in shape versus out of shape. That's the thing that triggers the one that's gonna go do, make the phone that's, the, if the phone weighs 5,000 pounds, that they're gonna, it's gonna be very light because it's the right things drawing. You hear people talk about vision boards and, and things like that. There's a reason that you have to keep the vision before you. Make it, you know, uh, I, you know what? I actually had a new revelation, another Bible one for you um, about uh, a lot of you guys have heard this, make the vision plain so that the runner may read it, who runs by it. Most people take that in reference to just a goal setting. How big of a thing do you have to have if you're running by it? It says that the runner, the guy running by it will see it. And it just jumped out at me. I'm like, Sometimes we don't have big enough dreams that you don't put a goal together that if I was running by it and life got busy and things got busy, I wouldn't see what the heck was right there. But if I had that vision and that image so big that it looked like a billboard, I could be running for five minutes past that thing and I would, it would be in front of me and it would be the driving force that made, made me get up in the morning and made me do the things that I wanted to do, okay? It's, it's the, if you, if you help people to understand that if, if, first off, if you understand it, first off, we gotta start with you. You have to believe in you. You have to be, can understand that you're the one that's gonna feed you properly. 
with the right things. That's why we do events. That's why we do events, because you get people that are, have the right mindset, the right visions that we point, paint for people. But when you can learn to take that and uh, transfer that and help somebody become a better person through their imagery and you speak those positive, life-filled words into them, you will see their countenance change right before your very eyes. And you don't have to say anything. Is they'll do whatever it takes. They'll do whatever it takes to make it happen, to, get the, to lose the weight, to, to, get to achieve the financial goals, to do the business. So, if you're gonna ride something in life, instead of, you know, just riding, if you're gonna use the ant, instead of just riding the ant, put the ant on top of the elephant. Let the ant lay on top of the elephant, jump on top of the elephant, and let the elephant take you to your destination. Because ultimately, if we learn to uh, create the vision and create the purpose for people and show them that they are really amazing in life, that they can succeed, they can achieve everything they've ever wanted. That, that you know, a lot of times people, people don't understand that, that these are, these are things that are put in you for a purpose, okay? That you're gonna have, you're gonna change not only your life, your future, but your family's future, and it's gonna be an amazing, amazing journey. So ride the elephant, not the ant, and if you'll teach people to do today what others won't, you will live tomorrow like others can't. Thank you guys, appreciate you. 